Hello everyone, Lorenzo here, and a very hearty welcome to a mission a day number one. This is my new series and it's prompted by the release of Kerbal Space Program point twenty two, that version, and for the first time ever it has a true technology tree. Look at here the new building, the research and development center. It gives you here a nice tech tree as of now, the first day of our brand new space program. It is of course fairly empty. We start out here with the start, this is the technology we started out with, easy as can be, and we have a pod, an engine, a booster, a small fuel tank, some girders, a antenna to communicate that oh so important science back to Kerbin, and a parachute to get the guys back safe and sound as well. We can have a look here at what's to come, the basic rocketry and supposedly after that we get many more technology paths. And here we get bigger fuel tanks, different fuel tanks, um, science equipment and the stack decoupler, that's correct. In the first tier here we get no decoupler. Now what I'm going to do is fly missions and get through this tech tree. Now I've read on the forums already that it is quite easy for people that have played the game for a while to get through it in three or four missions. So what I have done is I've looked for a plugin to make it a little bit harder and it has been the mission controller plugin. Look here, the red button on the bottom. This adds missions to the game and more importantly an actual economy as well. So the science part, the tree, it works on science points. You get them with your spaceships. But of course the dollar bit of the game, that is not quite finished by the developer yet. So we are looking for a plugin for this and we see our current budget here is 50,000 cronies or euros or dollars or whatever you want to call it. And here's a few settings, I've set that up nice and simple and we are going to select a mission. And here the, well, it's a rather big screen because I'm recording at a measly 720p so the uploads to YouTube remain a little bit manageable and these missions are intended to be done in order. So the first mission we are going to do is the Sputnik 1. Um, got some fluff text here. The point is to get this spaceship over 70,000 meters to just get it into space. Now the challenge here of course is to do this cheaply and add it with the new version is to do it with the technology we have available. So we're going to select the mission and move to the vehicle assembly building. And let that load for a second and I have made a spaceship already. It's called very aptly the Mission 1. An eight part spaceship. You can hide the mission for now and it is a very simple craft. Now with these parts you can make incredible things. You can go to the moon, you can go to basically all the planets, make massive single stage to orbit craft uh, and you have to because there's no separators in the basic tech but remember we have a budget constraint now so this uh, mission controller tab here it gives us what uh, this ship costs and it gives it nice the command pod is about 8000 the engine is expensive at 3000 and you can see the fuel is not negligible either. I really like this because the engines make it expensive, the pot obviously makes it expensive and on the whole you really have to watch your eye, you have to keep your eye on the budget. Now this craft clocks in at 19,000 crones out of a budget of 50k so we're well within budget and let's see if this can fulfill the mission and of course gather some science as well so we can unlock the decouplers and other parts that will need to that will need to complete further missions. So, going to hide that mission controller bit. Now, if you've not played the point twenty two version yet, there is now science, and there is science to be done everywhere, even on the launch pad here, I think. And you access it by clicking on the hatch, and I can just ask our crewman Jebediah for a crew report here, and. Well, the crew report from the launch pad. The crew is probably quite alright with being on the launch pad. It being Jebediah, he doesn't mind. So we get this report. We get some science value. It's not too much. I reckon the guys know their launch pad. And you get the option to transmit it back home. And for this, you get 100% of the points if you transmit it. And for other things, you can get a fraction of it where it's actually more valuable to take it back to Kerbin rather than transmitting the info. Well, this is... 100% uh, so we're just going to go ahead and transmit it. This is also why we have the antenna and this is where the resources tab becomes important. You can see our electric charge has been drained more than half by the simple act of transmitting the data. Now in these early stages of the game the electric charge cap capacity of your craft will be a limiting factor in the transmission. We're going to lift off only using the solid rocket boosters. They don't generate electricity but as soon as we light this rocket engine 
we will get electricity again to transmit some findings. So I'm going to fly straight up, see if we can make space and try and transmit and keep some data, get some information on the way. So here we go. Also in this update, the SAS, the stability system, it now takes a significant amount of electricity just to run that. So we're at one and a half kilometers. Now I'm going to ask Jeb how he is feeling. So I'm asking for a crew report here. And he says the shores look inviting and you watch the waves roll into the coast. This is a science value of three and a half. And I'm going to try and transmit that back down. So it says Minutron starting the transmission, 33%. So here the electric charge ran out. Oh wait, you have to increase the throttle and light the rocket engine. So you have to do many things at once now. So what happened here, if you could follow it in this, uh, this sort of console, first it transmitted a bit because it didn't have the power, it gave me partial points, but not full marks because not all of the data was in fact transmitted. Now we're a fair bit higher again, so I'm going to ask him again, Jeb, how are you feeling? And this time we get a report from the upper atmosphere. As we can see from his face, Jeb is very happy. Again, three and a half science points, full points for transmitting. So we're just going to go ahead and transmit that. Our rocket fuel has just run out. So this means this 20 electric charge is everything we have to work with. Now, as we saw before, we can transmit about half a report with that. Not ideal, but we can use it in a pinch. Now, the rocket has been exhausted. We are now just coasting upwards, trying to make our science goal. And if we open the mission controller tab again, we get a little overview of the mission. And we can see here, we need 70,000 altitudes and we've got 60,000 now. We're still going at about 800 meters per second, so that is looking good. And as soon as this reaches 70, we can close it up and we get the second mission goal is to just go back down to Kerbin. And oh, it wants me to throttle down. Here we go hide the finished goal. So as far as the mission is concerned we're done as soon as we've landed so we're going to close up this panel here. Now we are in space so we're going to ask Jeb once more how he is feeling. Got the crew report here and they are very much in space and the sky appears to be mostly below them. Well this is a fair assessment and we're going to go ahead and transmit as much of this sentiment as we can. So it's going to start not enough charge, but we did get two science points back down. Now there's another way to learn about an environment, and that's just to walk around in it. So if we take Jeb outside of the spacecraft, let go for a bit, and as you might have noticed, we are not in orbit, so there is a definite time limit on this EVA activity. If we just lounge here, we eventually will re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. He will not be happy with that. So we're going to have a quick look around here floating in space, we can go up, we can go left, we can go right, up, down, wow, it is amazing. And then we ask him for an EVA report, which is a whopping eight science values in value. And you can notice here, if I transmit this, I will only get 50% of the points. Even so, if I want to transmit it, it will tell me no comms devices on the vessel. Jebediah's EVA suit does not have enough communications antenna does just doesn't have an antenna I'm not sure what I'm on about so we can take the report with us store it and take it back into don't hit the empty booster take it back into the capsule so we can board that again and it tells me the report from just above from space just above Kerbin has been stored. I think there will be many more space places to go where you can get reports from and get science points. Obviously, if you get m much of the, if you get, if you do science on the same spots lots of times, uh, the value is going to decrease. For now, because we don't have any electricity, we don't have any rocket fuel, we don't have nothing really, uh, all we can do now is plummet back down. And I'm going to accelerate that for you until we are back to this, back on the surface and maybe we can get some uh, surface samples as well to collect. So just sit tight and see what happens. So here we are almost back down on the ground again. We can see the ship is burning, streaking through the air, straight down like a meteor. Jebediah is experiencing a lot of G-forces, but 
as I said, we have some science here. So of course there is now a way in the game to collect, to recover these craft that are landed on Kerbin. This is done through the um, what's it, the, the tracking station in the space center, where you can, where you used to be able to look at your spacecraft in space, your landers, your satellites, your rovers, whatnot. This now has a button to recover the craft and it will give you science also based on what is recovered and where it has been and of course on the reports that are inside. So we're going to land this craft, hopefully with the parachute, pop Jab outside for a bit and have him take a soil sample which is something else that can be done in the game now. So I'm going to just deploy the parachute and of course something else that needs to happen is to uh, finish this mission and get some money for the next uh, for the next mission tomorrow. The series is called a mission a day. We'll be trying to do one mission per day, so we get a gradual progression through the tech tree and see what challenges, budgetary or otherwise, this mission plugin will throw up. I'm not played through it at all. We're just doing gonna do it on the go. But I saw the forum site. It was like 50 or 60 pages, so that looked quite promising. So let's see how this craft gets on with the landing. Here comes the ground. And if we can. Mm, there was a small explosion, and the rocket engine just got destroyed, but the craft, and more importantly, its science, are fine. So Jebediah is going to step outside here. Let go of the craft. You're back home. No need to cling on to your capsule. Take a few steps. Uh, take a few steps. We can also plant a flag for posterity. Let's do that. So when the vessel is recovered, the flag will remain. So we can call that Mission 1's Posterity. Great. There we go. And from right where this flag is, we're going to take... No, we want a surface sample. Take a surface sample. Yep, looks like dirt. Sounds good to me. Keep it. And now we're going to oh no now we're going to complete the mission. So we we landed, hide the goal, and we can click this button. This is in all caps finish the current mission. So here we go. The mission is now finished, and we have 80k available for the next mission. We are not quite done. We're going to go to the space center here and recover this vessel. See how much science that is going to give us. So we go to the tracking station here. And we have the mission one landed at Kerbin. Hit the recover button. And yes, we're sure we want to recover the vessel. And it will give us the EVA report that was in the capsule. And it will give us some points for recovery of a recovery of a vessel after a suborbital flight. Eight science points. Great. So we've recovered that. And not to forget Jebediah Kerman himself. Recover him. We could just ask him to walk back home, but what well, the truck is there for the spaceship anyway, recovering this vessel. And his surface sample is worth a whopping nine signs. This means that a pinch of grass with some dirt is more valuable to the scientific endeavors of Kerbal Kind than a report from space, but we'll leave that as it be. Be that as it may. So we're going to have a quick look at the R&D center and then I'm going to wrap up and we can move on to tomorrow's mission. So the R&D center here, we can now get the basic rocketry unlocked. We have 34 science points and this costs a measly 5 science points. So we are well capable of purchasing this. We now get decouplers and some extra fuel tanks and more science gear. A mystery goo containment unit. This is also something you can take places and do science with. So we have 29 science points left and 3 branches to choose from. So we have the general rocketry, more engines, more fuel, more ambition. For 20 points, we could get that already. We get stability. For 18 points, we get the nose cone, the winglet, and the radial decoupler. Or we get survivability, a small engine, a landing strut, and a Mark II radial mount parachute for just 15 signs. So we can get one of these three. We're going to have a look at the mission we are going to be flying. This is the Sputnik 2. And the mission is to make a stable orbit around Kerbin. So we're not going to land anywhere except well, back on Kerbin. So we want to... Oh, well, it looks like I accidentally purchased the survivability one with 
the smaller engine, the landing struts, and the radial parachute. In other words, the worst one to do an orbital mission with, because we still don't have the couplers. We get a smaller engine instead of a bigger one, and I think I really wanted this one. Oh, we still have... we. Not all is lost. We have the stack decoupler. We don't have a radial decoupler. We have a stack decoupler and we have better parachutes. So tomorrow, tune back in and see how that mission will get on. We have 80,000 credits and we have parachutes and small engines and we're going to try and make orbit. This was Lorenzo from A Mission A Day and I'll see you in part two. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.